So let me uh, introduce our next speaker, uh, Nikol Nikola Majirov. Nikola Majirov was uh, born in um, Macedonia, uh, and uh, he um, was born in the family of war refugees from the Balkan Wars. And when he was 18, the collapse of Yugoslavia uh, affected his identity, so he um, had to reinvent himself in a country which was new, but also um, was rooted in traditions. So Nicholas' poems have been translated into 30 languages, including Estonian, and you could uh, buy, you can buy his book here um, at the center. So first time he uh, came to Estonia, um, it was several years ago, so he attended uh, uh, a poetry reading and, uh, uh, and the festival Trialogos, which uh, um, was organized by Taiva Nitvagi, and uh, um, so that was the beginning of um, our um, collaboration with uh, the school in the old town and uh, uh, with Taivo. So uh, Nicola, um, Nicola's poems are very um, um, intimately uh, connected with music and uh, the words and the, the uh, rhythm. Um, and, uh, he is, of course, the great admirer of uh, um, Arvo Pärt. And we've just learned yesterday that uh, another composer, um, Estonian composer, Tatiana Kozlova, has uh, uh, made uh, her composition uh, and used the poetry of uh, Nicola. So uh, there is a certain connection um, between music and the poetry. But I, I should stop here now and just call... Nicola to speak and read his poems. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to be here. Thank you for the invitation, St. John's School and Avopa Center. Well, um, my topic, as you see, is the silence, and I have to talk about it, which is absurd. Uh, and usually, I travel to uh, poetry festivals. They are very loud, and I feel privileged to to be here with uh, with you to share the silence. I will read a paper, uh, an essay. It's Unusual for me, usually I read poems and I feel more secure in this field, this essay. Usually when I, read, when I write, I never read it loudly. And it happened to read about silence. Let me start with quotation, with three quotations. First, two lines from the poem Walls by Konstantin Kavafi. When they were building the walls, how could I not have noticed? But I never heard the builders, not a sound. A second is the Susan Sontag, The Aesthetics of Silence. Silence is the artist's ultimate otherworldly gesture. By silence, he frees himself from several bondage to the world which appears as patron, client, audience, antagonist, arbiter, and disorder of his work. The artist has to gain the right to speak. And the third is from Swan's Way by Marcel Proust. There is no remedy but silence and shadow. When I was here three I think eight, nine years ago, as Irina mentioned, I, then I met Arvo Part, And in a way, I felt him very close. I complained to him that I, I write in a um, long period of time. But it happens sometimes to not write a poem for one year. 
And he, in order to support me, he said that these periods of non-writing, in fact, he named them creative silence. It is hard to find silence even in city libraries, at funerals, in all the rituals of city nights. It is Homer who said to speak about everything, to say everything is the act of the silent man. All formed identities have their own history of silence. In some regions in Latin America, when a child is born, the first thing they say to him while crying is, my child, be ready to keep silent in this world, to be patient. It is silence as a sign of initiation or creation. Music has its own body as the text has its own voice. Coltrane used to say that in the language of music, he wants to improve on words. I myself used to think as an unskilled messenger of my own thoughts that by using words, I would improve on silence. Emily Dickinson wrote, silence is infinity. My grandmother used to tell me that when we die, we become infinite. I put an equ equation mark between being alive and words, since I used to believe that silence is only linked to death and the symmetry of graves. Yet, it is over graves that one cries the loudest. I used to live in a house where the words of three different generations fought for their status of importance. While some spoke of memories, the reply from the other side was full of expectations. In that daily war with the bayonets of words, only listening to the music of Arvo Part or Coltrane, with the volume turned up, opened to me a space for the silence of thinking. I grew up in a system where most of the poets were fighting to enter the school reading list to become classics before they even became, became contemporary. While the poets who were dwelling on the sharp age of creativity had to build the timeless caves of silence. Therefore, I believe in silence only as a beginning of the word, not as an absence. When I see a shadow, I don't think of the lost light, but of the true shape of the object. Silence is the true light of shapeless words. Let me quote Chaslav Milos lines from his poem dedication. What is poetry which does not save nations or people? I swear there is in me no wizardry of words. I speak to you with silence like a cloud or a tree. All city postcards transmit silence together with frozen images of squares, monuments, human faces. Walter Benjamin writes that all deserted city corners, all sounds and things still have their own silences, just as at midday in the mountains there is the silence of hands, of the axe, of the cicadas. The poet makes sounds visible and turns them again into stillness through the very act of creating. I am the offspring of Balkan war refugees who used to keep silent in the cellar in order to survive. The world of silence was their mother tongue of presence. 
Writing poetry is traveling through the dark veins of world's imperfections, discovering that silence and darkness are the two halves of the core of the universal code of understanding. Because in silence, all sounds are equal. In the darkness, all objects are the same. As children, we needed loneliness to make the weird yet silent faces of freedom in front of the mirror. We used to think it was an essential personal act, and only later we came to know that, in fact, we have all done the same thing. The world is being revealed to us when we start disclosing our secrets carefully, like the first steps of a stoned dog. Poetry is close to silence, both when read in bars in the presence of the sounds of the coffee machine, and when read in waiting rooms surrounded by the angry horns of belated trains. Not pronounced when everyone expects, poetry becomes a prayer. In the time of powerful industries, the act of creating becomes like an act of producing, which is not far from one of Heidegger's thoughts about the origin of works of art. Yet, it is the act of creating that brings poetry to the spring of personal truth, to the depths of time outside of the calendar. Each verse is polished by the silence as a stone polished by the sea. Just as defeat or victory cannot be defined in military terms, as Mahmoud Darwish pointed out, in the same manner the very act of creation cannot be measured by the density of the written words or musical notes. Some notes look like tears, as Arvo Part would whisper. Some letters look like opened eyes. The poem is not the words. The painting is not the picture. The music is not the sound. The sculpture is not the stone. They travel patiently through the corridors of the unframed memory of our unframed memory, like a letter without an address on the envelope. Writing poetry is building a new language where silence starts. It is a quiet dying of the fear of death. Poetry is never late and never comes on time. Poetry is the falling of the sand in the sunglass. Music is the falling of the sand in the sunglass. Art is the falling of the sand in the sunglass rather than time. Poets often include the date of creating a poem under it, similar to the signature of the painter in the corner of a landscape that never ends. And this is an ordinary dialogue with the moment, with the archive of, archive of civilization heritage, a fact that would help all future archaeologists and museum curators to answer the question when the poem was born, but not why tearing the pages might remain the most powerful visual and audible demonstration of the author's outer censorship, while the burning of books on the squares would remind us of the dramatic ending of some ideology. Now, just by pressing a button, novels and memoirs, addresses and promises, can silently disappear. While creating, I, forgot, I forget about the ideal reader taking the position of an invisible meta-creator or rediscoverer. I read the written and unwritten words silently at airports in clean and sterile hotel rooms imagining the battle of the temporary author 
against the internal reader within myself. Many poets from Bosnia during the siege of the city of Sarajevo more than 20 years ago, owing to lack of paper, wrote on paper napkins and toilet paper, all of which were easily perforated by the pen, just as the bullets easily travel through their bodies. No time to change the written words, to change the echo of the prayer traveling to the beginning of the world. In such circumstances, the only revision a man can make is the revision of one's own history and of that which has never been said nor written. The act of creation in the face of death is not generated by inherited fears. It is the, the unseen seed of spiritual significance. It is the quiet shadow of an unwitnessed awakening, yet louder than the melody will whistle loudly while walking along a dark and empty street. Those who mystify the act of creativity would say that the artist needs a cage in order to turn freedom into art and needs freedom in order to turn the cage into art. In both cases, the artist cannot see the bars. Deleuze says a creator is not someone who works for pleasure. A creator only does what he or she absolutely needs to do. He says that the problem is no longer getting people to express themselves but providing little gaps of solitude and silence in which they might eventually find something to say. Creativity builds the vertical of silence, what Rilke calls the deep speaking to the deep. I have no illusions that I'm saying something new because everything is present even without it being documented like minerals in an undiscovered mine. They are there. I believe more in hidden toys than in war secrets. Sometimes, in order to write, it is necessary to stay in solitude, which does not bring fears and memories greater than death itself. The most certain way to remember your last dream is to not look through the window when you wake up. I do believe that the urge of retelling will exist while the mystery of leaving and returning still exists. Very often I feel safer when I talk in dreams and keep silent in reality. I have become aware of the vulnerability of words and their limited Livelessness outside of compulsory textbooks. Tadeusz Rożewicz, in his poem Unknown Letter, tells how Jesus covered and wiped away forever the letters he wrote with his finger on the earth's surface when Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John approached him. Even he who never ever wrote anything was aware of the suggestive power of the word. I believe more in the imperfection of language than in the enduring nation of the word in the era of virtual icons and gods. Laurie Anderson says that technology is only the fire around we gather to retell stories. In such conditions, are we able to talk about the archetypal loneliness of the creator, about a certain modern asceticism or electronic monasticism through complete informational celibacy, in which creativity wouldn't be reduced only to encyclopedism or knowing facts only, but to renewal of the vertical dialogue? The active presence inside the jar of virtuality has a particular effect equal in power to euphoric political speech. 
Even when huddled in the crowd, you have a feeling that the leader is addressing only you. Behind the screen, we can shout with closed lips. The creator has the right to gain the freedom of silence against the imposed silence. Creativity can turn silence into freedom. Creativity is the mystery of freedom, says Berjaev. While the poet Beidao writes that freedom is nothing else but the distance between the hunter and his victim. When creating, you are both the hunter and the prey, the hunter and the animal, while art is that beautiful distance named freedom. Thank you very much. Um, If you allow me, I will call uh, Karolina Pichelgas, wonderful poet from um, Estonia and who translated my poems into Estonian uh, to read a few poems uh, together. And there will be uh, English and Russian translation uh, on your headphones. There are many poets that wrote about silence not to mention Thomas Tranströmer, Lucian Blaga for Romania, and Pablo Neruda, and I hope we can contribute just with few lines, try to break it, break the silence. The first poem I read in my mother tongue in Macedonia is Silence, Tishina. Ne postoji tišina u svetot. Monasite ne aje izmislile, se koji den da ih slušat, konjite i padot na perduvit od krilijata. Vaikus. Maailmas pole vaikust. Mungad mõtlesid selle välja, et kuulda iga päev hobuseid ja tiiva sulgede langemist. Strelki od časovnikot. Nasledi go detstvo tot albumot, prenesi ja tišino, da što se širi iz testnoma, kako ja to ptici volet. Dlanki začuva ja nepravilno, da topka sneg i kapki te, što se spušta ad polinijata na životot. Kaži ja molitvata so sklopeni usni, zborovite se seme, što pa ja vsaksija. Molkot, v utrovata se uči, obidi se, da se rodiš, kako golema strelka po polnoj, i sekundite vednaš, ki te prestignat. Kella seierit. Päri oma lapsepõlv fotoalbumist. Kanna vaikust, mis paisub ja tõmbub kokku, nagu linnu parv õhus. Hoia peos silumate lumepalli ja piisku, mis valguvad elu lõnga pidi alla. Loe palvet kinni sui. Sõnad on lillepotti pudenevad seemned. Vaikima õpitakse üsas. Katsu sündida nagu suur seier pärast keskööd ja sekundid jõuavad kohe sinust ette. Otkrivanje. Veke odamna nikomu ne pripadjam kako parička padnata v ravot na stara ikona. Razfrlen so među strogite nasledstva i zaveti, zatroletnite na spuštenite sudbini. Istorijata je prvata granica, što treba da je pominam. Go čekam glasot, odvojeno so zvučeto na poslušnost, a za mojete dalešnost, što ke izvesti. Kako bronzen spomenik pod ploštadot od zvezdi sum, vrst koji pticite ki vežbaat himnite na nadež, kako perduv zalepen v razlušpa od jajce se odkrivam za prerano zaminuvanje, koje razkažuva in novi od vrst život, što go navestuva. Domot, se koji den počatorot na sveto tajno mi se menuva samo detstvo to, nekako med, što ne dopušta tugi, tragi vo sebe. 
ilmutamine. Juba ammu pole ma kellegi oma, just kui vana ikooni servalt pudenenud münt. Olen hajali rangete päranduste ja tõotuste segadikus alla lastud saatuse kardina taga. Ajalugu on esimene piir, mis mul ületada tuleb. Ootan kuulekast kooskõlast lahku löönud häält, mis räägiks mulle minu kaugusest. Olen nagu pronks kuju tähtedest linna väljaku all, mille kohal linnud harjutavad oma lootuse hümni. Ilmun nagu munakoore külge kinni jäänud sulg, mis jutustab enne aegsest lahkumisest ja kuulutab uut elu. Minu kodu ilmatelgi all muutub sala ja iga päev. Ainult lapsepõlv on nagu mesi, kuhu ei jää ühtegi jälge. Način na postojanje. Premnogu padovi voznesuvanja nese arhivirani vo knjigi te što se spoluvaat vo vobečajenite vojni. Zapišali nekoj, deka troški te frleni od prozorec odpadjat pobrzo od snegulki te, deka vodopadite se samo žrtvi na svoje to ime. Zapadot na carstvo te epohi te se pišuva, ne za starec od što je gleda igračkata odkopana od boložeri te. Semaforot ne može da go spreči vreme to in naša ta nesigurnost je samo način na postojanje na tajni te. Stravot postoji vo dalečini te, ko ga sagite se odvoluvat od iskrite odejki kon nebo to, no niko i dosega ne napišal traktat za čadot od svekata vo nog, što se pretopova, ni tu za kapkite vosok, što ni se stvrdnuvat v sčevlite, si te za plamenot zboruvat, što ga osvetluvat našite lica. Olemas olemise viis. Liiga palju langusi ja tõuse jääb jäädvustamata raamatuisse, mida harilikes sõdades põletatakse. Kas on keegi kirjutanud, et aknast välja visatud leivaraasukesed langevad maha kiiremini kui lumehelbed, et tuisk liiv on kõigest oma nime ohver, Kirjutatakse küll impeerimite ja ajastute alla käigust, aga mitte vanast mehest, kes vaatab mängu asja, mille buldooser üles kaevas. Valgus foor ei saa peatada aega ja meie ebakindlus on lihtsalt saladuste olemas olemise viis. Hirm on kusagil kaugel, kui tahm eraldub sädemetest, mis lendavad taeva poole. Ometi pole keegi kirjutanud traktaati küünlasuitsust, mis sulab ühe ja ka vahatilkadest, mis meie kingadel hanguvad. Kõik räägivad vaid leegist, mis valgustab meie nägusid. The last poem I will read in English. The fast is the century. If I were wind, I would have peeled the bark of the trees and the facades of the buildings in the outskirts. If I were gold, I would have been hidden in cellars into crumbly earth and among broken toys, I would have been forgotten by the fathers and their sons would remember me forever. If I were a dog, I wouldn't have been afraid of refugees If I were a moon, I wouldn't have been scared of executions. If I were a wall clock, I would have covered the cracks on the wall. Past is the century. We survive the weak earthquakes, watching towards the sky, yet not towards the ground. We open the windows to let in the air of the places we have never been, and wars, wars don't exist since someone wounds our heart every day. Fast is the century, faster than the word. If I were dead, everyone would have believed me when I kept silent. Kiire on sajand. Kiire on sajand, kui oleksin tuul, kooriksin puudelt koore ja äärelinna majadelt fassaadid. Kui oleksin kuld, peidetaks mind keldritesse, 
mureda maa alla katkiste mängu asjade vahele. Isad unustaks mu ära, aga pojad peaks alati meeles. Kui oleksin koer, ei pelgaks ma pagulesi, kui oleksin kuu, ei kardaks hukkamisi, kui oleksin seinakell, varjaksin ära kõik seinapraud. Kiire on sajand, väikesed maavärinad elame üle, vaadates taevasse, mitte maha. Teeme lahti aknad, et lasta sisse õhku paikadest, kus me pole kunagi käinud. Sõdu pole olemas, sest iga päev haavab keegi meie südant. Kiire on sajand, kiirem kui sõna. Kui oleksin surnud, usuksid minu vaikimist kõik. Thank you very much. Lõgu odra. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a... No, no question. No. So if, 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 if there is a, a question or a comment, uh, although it's very unusual to, to comment, but please... Two very strange questions, I think. When I was looking at you, you reading your own words, uh, I had a sensation that you are creating a sculpture. You're treating words as matter. Thank you. It's in a way that's how you dematerialize, as uh, again quotation of Arbor Part. Yeah. By by making the sculpture, we. In fact, dematerialize the stone and give it back, I think, to infinity somehow. Also, as writing words is giving back again space to the silence in a way. Thank you for this. I, I remember your comment. Thank you. Second question comes from it Do you have connected senses? Synesthetics, I think it's called. Can you smell your words? Can you see the color of the words? I think now again I open. A, I, I like to, poetry of Tram, Thomas Transformer, just because of it. Because there you can find silence with the color. Also, you can find you can, um, in a way, uh, hear the sound of 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 the, the trees even when there is no wind. In a way, I I I think that. Every sense is just a, a, a gate in the same opening, the new gate, but on the same level. There is no hierarchy in this. And it's, we are all resonant beings. I mean, and in a way... Uh, it's all the same. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Uh, thank you again.